Magnify the Lord, my spirit praises His name, for death cannot hold them captives, even in the grave. Jesus is the Lord, even in the grave. Jesus is the Lord, my soul. My soul, magnify the Lord. My spirit, praise His name. For death could not hold Him captives, even in the grave. Jesus is the Lord, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. God said this song. They call him Jesus. He came to love. He and forgive. He live and die. To buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives, my Savior lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone. I know, yes, I know he owes my future. My life is worth a living just because he lives. Hallelujah. Father, we worship, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration because we are so faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I greet to all in the mighty name of Jesus. I bring greetings to you in Jesus' mighty name. I bring greetings to you from my dear wife who has always been, been uh, the pillar behind me, who has been supporting me and encouraging me. I'm praying along with me as I am uh, uh, broadcasting this particular program right now. I give thanks to God for her life. I thank God for every one of you, all my friends in Facebook and uh, my Facebook friends who has always been getting connected uh, and to listen to the, my messages for some weeks now and give thanks to God for your life. I pray God will continue to bless you um, in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, the honor and adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I am excited this morning. I am really, really very excited. I am excited and some of you might be wondering what is the reason of my excitement. I am excited because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because Christ is alive, he's alive and he's alive forevermore. I am excited because of the Lord that we have, the great and mighty one. I am excited because of his works of salvation and redemption in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In spite of the lockdowns all over the world, in spite of the lockdown, I have a good news for you. That Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the devil and his entourage conspired to kill Jesus. He was, he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. And uh, he was buried. On the fourth day, Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. He was locked down by the enemy. We are not the only one that experienced lockdown. Jesus Christ experienced lockdown. He was locked down by the enemy over there in the grave for complete three days. But, he, but the devil made a mistake because the Bible says if devil has known, he would not have crucified the king of glory, but he did not know he made the greatest mistake of his life. And as a result of that, we are alive today because Jesus Christ risen. He has risen. He rose from the dead. 
he was sown in weakness, he rose up in power. And that is the confidence we have in him. Hallelujah. We give thanks to God because Jesus Christ, he moved from lockdown to breakthrough. And as you are listening to me right now, I see somebody coming out. You are coming out of your lockdown. You are moving to breakthrough. The Lord is moving you to breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No power of death could hold Jesus captive. The Bible says, according to what the Lord Jesus Christ said, he said, nobody, no man taketh my life from me. He said, I lay it down by myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to pick it up. Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, the King of glory, he laid down his life on the cross of Calvary and he picked it up. He picked it up. He moved from lockdown to breakthrough. And the Lord is having a message for you this morning. He said, I'm moving you from lockdown to breakthrough. Because I live, you will also live. And that's exactly what the Lord has done. He is moving us. Hallelujah. He's moving us from lockdown to breakthrough. Hallelujah. I said to you today, in spite of coronavirus, you know, people, when Jesus was buried, they put a very big stone to hinder him from coming out. Very large stone was rolled on the tomb of Jesus. But you know, guess what? The power of God came from heaven. And the, that same power that they lifted him, that rose him up from the dead, that same power rolled away the stone and they let him out by the grace of God. That same power that raised Christ from the dead is going to quicken you. He's going to raise you up from whatever lockdown you find yourself right now. It might be an institutional lockdown, circumstantial lockdown, mental lockdown, depression lockdown, anything that lock you down. The power of Jesus is setting you free. In the name of Jesus, receive your freedom in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord is setting you free today. You are getting your freedom because he lives, we shall live also. Because Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords lives, we shall live also. Hallelujah. I am here to testify of God's goodness and of God's mercy. And because Christ lives, we are bound to live. Hallelujah. You are moving from your lockdown to breakthrough. On this very day of Easter, the Lord is moving you out. The Lord is moving you out. Whatever ties you down, whatever holds you captive, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings and Lord of lords, is setting you free right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are moving from lockdown to breakthrough. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us bow down our head as we pray. Most precious Heavenly Father, King of kings and the Lord of lords, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for choosing to come down to the world, to lay down your life for a sinner like us. Father, King of glory, we thank you for greater love has no man than this. For a friend to have laid down his life for his own friend. Not only for your friend you died, you even die for those who hate you. Even when you are being killed, you still say, Father, forgive them. We thank you for the mercy. We thank you for your goodness. And Lord Almighty God, I pray, Holy Spirit, take over my mouth. Speak to your people. Take over their heart. Give them an understanding spirit in the mighty name of Jesus that at the end of this particular message, their life and my life will not remain the same. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. And everybody say, Amen. We give thanks to God. I greet you all. Happy Easter. I greet you all. Happy Easter. And I pray that the death of Jesus Christ, death, his, his death will not be in vain in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, somebody saying amen to that. Hallelujah. You will never experience any breakdown in your life. Whatever tie you down will begin to lift you up. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This today, John, you know we are in the in Easter period. But one of the most important things that we, we're going to talk about today is something that is very significant to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that is very significant to our salvation. Hallelujah. What is that thing that is significant? What is that thing that is so important? What is that thing that is so special? What is that thing that is very synonymous? No, that particular thing, I want you to take a look at it. God has been so faithful. Last week, I was preaching on the power in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. And today we are continuing from the power series. And we are moving from the power in the name of Jesus to the power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The power in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is, has remained one of the greatest mysteries the world has ever known. Hallelujah. It is mysterious. Because there is so much power and unexplained, unexplainable power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, before we move forward in that, we're going to first, thing, first of all look at the one thing. The importance of the blood of Jesus. The importance of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is so important. Very important to us. Very important. But before we talk to you, the importance of the blood. Why is the blood important? Naturally, just why is the blood important? The book of Leviticus, uh, we're going to read from Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. The Bible says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 17. And we're going to read from verse 11. Hallelujah. The Lord says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make atonement for the soul. And we all know the meaning of atonement. Hallelujah. Atonement is to make amends for the wrongdoing. That is the meaning of atonement. To make amends for the wrongdoing. Or to be reconciled back to God. And there is nothing that can do that without the blood. And the Lord says clearly over here that the, the life of the flesh, the, all the flesh all over the world, the life of the flesh, whether human or animal or anything, any existing thing, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Is in the blood. Verse 14 says, And for it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it, for the life thereof. Therefore, I say unto the children of Israel, ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So the blood is a life giver. No blood, no life. What gives us life is the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is not only physical. The blood of Jesus is spiritual. And one thing that is so, 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 so special about the blood is that the blood of Jesus is not... Uh, it, 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 there is no substitute. It, there is no substitute to the blood of Jesus. It can never be substituted for any other thing. And uh, no inventor has ever been able to invent blood. No, no scientist has ever been able to find solution to the blood. There is no blood factory where they manufacture blood because the blood is divine. The blood is divine. The blood proceeds from the maker and nobody because it is the life. If it has not been for the blood, the scientists will have by now, they've made robot, robots that really look exactly like human beings. But the only thing that they don't have is the blood. And we give thanks to God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because the blood is the life. That blood is the life. And wherever and whenever the blood is demanded, the life is demanded. Those who perform rituals, Whenever they get to the point where they want to perform rituals, what, they, what is demanded is the blood. If they say, give us a ram, what they say is, give us the blood of that ram. It is the blood that is demanded. If it is, as, if it is the life that is demanded, wherever blood is demanded, life is demanded. If it has not been so, it, a, a pint of blood can easily be taken out of somebody and be given for ritual, but it is impossible. Wherever the, 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 the life is demanded, the blood, blood is demanded, the life of that person is demanded. Hallelujah. There is life in the blood. There is life, great life, mighty life, glorious life in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And as the blood is life to our natural body, so so is life to our spiritual body. Amen. You cannot uh, really ex uh, understand the, the, the power of the blood as we move into the New Testament. The New Testament is blood-based. It is based on the blood of Jesus. There is nothing that can ever be done beside the blood of Jesus. Everything that is done in the New Testament 
the foundation of it is the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 28 there. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, sorry. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26 and verse 28. Hallelujah. And Matthew chapter 26 uh, from uh, verse 20, 28. It says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. This is my blood of the new covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ is not written in ink. And the New Testament is not written in ink. It is written in the blood of Jesus. The New Testament is written in the blood of Jesus. He says that for this is my blood of the New Testament. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Hallelujah. For the remission of sin. This is my blood of the New Testament. The New Testament is written in the blood of Jesus. It's written with the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything about the New Testament is, is blood-based. Hallelujah. So blood is the life giver to our natural body, also is the life to our spiritual body. Without the blood of Jesus, the Bible says clearly, you have no life in you. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 53. Hallelujah. John chapter 6 verse 53. And then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Unless you eat of the, of the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Son of God, and you eat of it, and you drink of his blood, you have no life in you. The blood of Jesus Christ is the life giver. Is the life giver. And we're going to see through the blood of Jesus what happened. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. Number one, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. Through the blood of Jesus. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. By him to reconcile all things to himself. By him I say. Whether they be things in earth or in heaven. He reconciled everything to himself. The only thing that appears to the Lord God is the blood. Is the blood. When man sins. The only thing that God sees that can take away that is sins because sin takes away life. Sin takes away relationship. And whenever man sins, the only thing that takes it away is the blood of Jesus. Is the blood. And so God has always been demanding blood. In the book of Leviticus, for the atonement of sin, the atonement which means to take away for the amendment of our lives, it is the blood of Jesus. And when we see, when, when God himself, when during the, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, the Bible says God made a coat for them. And the coat that God made of animal skin, the coat of animal skin that God made, we know definitely that God must have sacrificed blood before he can cover them with that garment. That is the coat of animal skin that God himself shed, showing us this is the way to be able to please me, to enter to my throne. And Abel understood that in the book of Genesis chapter 4, when he decided to make a sacrifice. Many people might be wondering, why is it that the sacrifice of Abel was preferred and accepted above that of Cain? It is, the answer is simple. It is the, the, it is the substance of their sacrifice. It is the sacrifice. He made the fat of, of the, the, the sacrifice of fat. He shed the blood. And whenever God sees the blood, he forgives our sin. And we have a good relationship with him. It is the blood. Not any other thing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. On Mount Carmel, we understood what happened. It was the blood shed. Hallelujah. And uh, in many places in the Bible, it is that it has always been the blood. Hallelujah. In the book of Chronicles, when, when Solomon made a sacrifice when the temple was finished. It was the blood that was shed. It was the blood, the blood that was shed. And after so many people are talking about the thousand, uh, th thousand uh, uh, cows and they talk about countless rams that was slaughtered 
and the blood was flowing. God was at peace. Mm -hmm. God, 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 God was, was pleased with him. And he asked Solomon, what is it that you want? I will give it to you. Ask anything. The blood. The blood. Hallelujah. The blood. So that's number one. We have peace with God. With the blood of Jesus. Number two, also, through the blood of Jesus, we have forgiveness of sin. Amen? Through the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, the Bible says, Almost everything was purged with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Almost everything was purged by the blood. Almost everything was purged by the blood. The meaning of purge means cleansed by the blood. Almost everything was cleansed by the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. The no remission means there is no forgiveness of sin. Without the shedding of blood. So for us to receive that forgiveness of sin, the blood is very vital. The blood is very vital. Remember in the Old Testament, when the blood is shed in the Old Testament, when God, when anybody sinned in Leviticus 16 and 17, chapter 16 and 17, when somebody sinned, they, 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 the priest lead them and they will put their hand on the head of the ram uh, or the go or the sheep and they will slowly, they will kill that sheep, shed the blood to be able to make to a peace with, with God, to be able to, to forgive their sin for the moment. But it is not a thing that happens every day. It is not a thing that, so as a result of that, people are still in bondage in, uh, of that particular sin until the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords choose to come into the world to take our place on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Thank, thanks be to God for Jesus. Without the, the blood, there is no way we can see, we can ever get to the presence of God. Number three, through the blood of Jesus, we are clear from sin. Remember, number one, we have peace with God. Number two, forgiveness of our sins through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus, we are cleansed from sin. Let's turn our Bible to the book of First John. Book of First John. Go spell according to John. The First John, chapter one and verse seven. First John, chapter one and verse seven. The Bible says, "But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship." with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sins and the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from all sins and then you can just be wondering the reason why jesus choose to go and die on the cross of calvary for me and for you it is he chose to die so that his blood that is shed on that cross might just take away our sin. The Bible says that the blood of his son might cleanse us from our sins. Hallelujah. Anybody that is not dirty doesn't need cleansing. Anybody that is not dirty. The Bible says we say we do not sin. We are liars. And the truth is not in us. And the Bible also says all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Since all have sinned, we need a savior. We need one to come, somebody to come and stand there for us. And that is the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ came to the world to take our place on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We are forgiven. We are cleansed. We are cleansed through the blood of Jesus. Number four, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are also drawn nigh unto God. Through the blood of Jesus, we are drawn closer unto God. If we are before, we are foreigners, we are aliens. But God himself, through his faithfulness, through his goodness, he drew us closer to himself. Hallelujah. Book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. The Bible says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, might be made nigh, might be made nigh, might be drawn closer by the blood of Jesus. We are afar off. Just like the book of Isaiah chapter 59 from verse 1 to 3 says that the hand of the Lord is not short, that cannot reach us, neither is he here heavy, that he cannot hear us. 
but our sin has separated us from him and hid his face from us. It is our sin. It is the sin. The sin of the whole world. We're talking about coronavirus today. Come on, let's face it. The sin of the world provokes God. We are now living under mercy. It is the mercy, if not for the mercy of God, we will have all been wiped off from the face of the earth. We are living under mercy because the sin of the world is so much. And that is why we need to understand the real concept, the whole concept of salvation and the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says he has broken every wall of partition. Every wall of partition, the things that separated us from him has been completely broken. He has been broken. And if you don't give your life to Jesus, that wall of partition is still remaining in your life. He's still there in your life. And the moment you confess your sin and you ask him to come, Come into your life. That pain is automatically taken away. Hallelujah. The moment you, when you call on the name of the Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ draws you closer to God. And so every form of intermediary is taken away. You don't need to go to man again and confess your sin to man. The Bible says, Come ye therefore boldly, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, Come ye therefore boldly to the throne of grace, that you may be able to obtain mercy. And find grace to help in the time of need. You can now come to the Lord boldly. Come to the throne of grace boldly. Because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus broke down every wall of partition. And drew us closer to him. We are what we are today. Thanks be to the Lord. Thanks be to the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary. For me and for you. Number four, again, we are brought nigh to God through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus, we are purchased of God. This, I want you to understand this very place very, very well. Through the blood of Jesus, we are purchased. We are purchased of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, take heed, take heed in verse Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. The book of Acts chapter 20. And then verse 28, it says, Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flocks over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased. Which he has purchased. I want you to underline the word purchased in your Bible. Which he has purchased with his own blood. We have all been under the dominion of the devil. And Paul, like Paul, Paul, Paul says in the book of Romans, what I want to do, I did not do. I could not do. What I don't want to do, that is what I, I am doing. And that is to say that, that, that we are under the dominion of the devil. We are under the dominion of the devil. And there's no way we can break ourselves free from it unless the blood of Jesus. And when the blood of Jesus Christ comes, when the Lord shed his blood, he shed his blood to be able to purchase us. And that is the very, very important point, the very place that you need to understand. Purchased, the word purchased. Hallelujah. The blood is needed as a legal tender. That, 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 you know, when, when you might be thinking, if the Lord purchased us, you know purchase involves payment. And if truly the Lord purchased us, how does he make the payment anyway? How does he make the payment when he, if he truly purchased us? In all the days, in those days, in those times over there, there is nothing like, like money. And as a result of that, what is being used is uh, uh, trade by butter. Trade by butter is exchange of good for service or exchange of service for service, or exchange of good for goods. So as a result of that, under the trade by, by battle method, God himself approached uh, 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 Satan, and the Satan said, well, you know, these people, they are under me, because you cannot go against your word. The Bible says those who sin, they are of the devil. So all these people, the world have sinned, all the world have sinned, though the world are under devil, under the dominion of the devil, because they have all sinned. And because of sin, they are in bondage. 
I was in bondage. The whole world was in bondage because of sin. Because they have committed sin. So, and the Lord looked at him and said, well, they are, I'm going to buy them over. And the devil said, well, the price I'm going to give, it has to be the blood. And it has to be the blood of your only son. That's what I'm going to do, of, of your only son of Jesus Christ. And then the devil knows how, how, how important the, the Lord, the life of Jesus Christ is. How important it is. And then he believed he has been running after Christ for a long time. He took him to the mountain. He found a way to destroy him. And this Bible says, the Bible says, over there, because Jesus Christ himself confirmed it. The son of this world comes, but find nothing in me. And uh, but on this particular point, he, he, that is, this is the final deal. You, for, for you to have these people back of your, as your children, I need, I need the blood. I need life. I need life. I need blood of Jesus. I need life. And God said, fine. God said, fine. You have a deal. Devil, you have a deal. And he was so happy that when he, if he has been able to get rid of Jesus Christ, he knows that just a very short time we're going to fall back. Even when God takes us in, he will, will fall back into his hand. Because there is no way we can save ourselves from the sin. So the devil thought he had a good deal. But that was when he destroyed himself. And so he moved forward to destroy the king of glory. The Bible says if the enemy has known, he would not have killed the king of glory. But devil did not know. He did not know. So as a result of that, he demanded for the life, demanded the, the exchange that we, for us, for God to have us back as his children, for God to buy us back, the only price we wanted is the life of Jesus, is the blood of Jesus. And God agreed. God agreed. And Jesus Christ decided, even though he was God, but he decided to, to make himself as a man put himself on his feet so that he would be killed. And he did not know that God, Jesus Christ, is bigger than death. He's bigger than death. Oh, death, where is your sting? First Corinthians 15. Oh, grave, where is your victory? The Lord Jesus Christ was so in weakness, he rose up in power. And that, what, that is what the devil did not know. But eventually, he, the, 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 he made the purchase. He made the purchase. He made the purchase. And uh, you know what the purchase is? A purchase is a transfer of goods or property. So he made the purchase. And uh, we, as, as God's commodity, as we become God's commodity, God's property, because Jesus Christ paid for us with his precious blood. And so God, we became the children of God via Jesus. I think you all understand what I mean. Now, for us to be able to now say we are the children of God, that means that we have been bought. Though that purchase did not cost you anything, but it cost God his only son. It cost Jesus his life. That purchase, what he paid for us on the cross of Calvary, he did not cost you, but it cost him everything. A sacrifice that cost nothing, worth nothing. A sacrifice that cost little, worth little. And the sacrifice that cost much, worth much. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all on the cross of Calvary. The price was paid for me and for you. And that price is the blood of Jesus. I think you now understand me. You understand why the blood of Jesus is important. The price was the blood of Jesus. But that is not it. That's not all. Now, we it now take us to another level. Because when the purchase is made over a particular commodity, that commodity be, it be belongs to the person who made the purchase. As a result of that, when you buy a car, the car cannot tell you where he wants to be driven. Because when you buy a car, the car belongs, uh, belongs to you. When you buy a, 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 a horse, the horse belongs to you. When you buy a goat, it belongs to you. You can take your car, your goat, your camel to wherever you want to take it because it's your property. And as a result of that, if when Christ has paid for us, we have become God's property. And the number one thing that happened, it has some, 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 some significance, but number one thing that happened is the moment Christ died and paid the price with his precious blood, something happened. The devil lost his possession and God gained the possession. 
Because when the purchase was made, you cannot sell a commodity and still be holding on to it. And that was what the devil was trying to do. Because when the moment you give your life to Christ, you have become God's property. And since you have become God's property, everything about you belongs to him. So, whosoever owns you, owe everything you have. That means your children are God's property. Your house, God's property. Your, 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 your family, everything you have, everything you are, they are God's property. You don't own yourself again because you have been bought at the price. So you don't owe yourself anymore. You, there is a price that has been paid over you. And that it will, let's just open our Bible to first, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. Amen. Verse 20. So the Bible says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are bought with a price. So that means I don't belong to myself anymore. No, you are free to call me Nelson Jesus. Nelson Jesus. Nelson God. Why? Because my father, the ownership of who owns me, the ownership has just been turned over. As a result of that, when God paid for us with his precious blood, we cease to be the owner of ourselves. The Bible said, I have been bought with a price. And you have been bought with a price. So you don't belong to yourself anymore. Whatever you are <clears throat> is God's. And that's why you'll be very foolish. Foolish of me, foolish of you to claim something as yours. There's nothing you have that is not given to you. There's nothing you receive that God has not given it to you. So as a result of that, there's nothing, no claim that you can make over your life. It is God who has given you that life. Then you have been bought with a price. Jesus has paid it all. He has paid it. He paid. He paid it all. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus has paid it. So as a result of that, you have no right over yourself. Every, all the, the, what you have today, it is the Lord's. It belongs to God. It belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should be very happy that you belong to Jesus. I am so glad that I belong to him. What about yourself? Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 23 of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23. It says, Ye are bought with a price. Be ye not the servant of men. That takes us to the next thing, next level. You are bought with a price. So do not be servant of men anymore because you have been bought. You have been bought. That's a price over you. A price time. And Christ has paid that. He has paid it on the cross of Calvary. You have been bought with a price, but then you are also have you've been warned as well. Say so you have been bought with a price, and he said, Begin the, the in, in chapter 6, uh, verse uh, uh, 20 says, Glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's, which belong to God. Not you have been because you have been bought with a price. And in chapter 7, verse 23 says that you have been bought with a price. Do not be servants of men anymore. So you need to know what you are. The Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 says, As long as, as a, the child is a child, he did not. He is still, still going to live as a child. He doesn't have the right to his property. So because he cannot fight for it, just like as a slave is a slave, and he doesn't know that he's a son, he will continue to live like a slave. So also you need to understand what you are in Christ. You are God's property. I am God's property. Why? Because Christ has paid it. This weekend, what we are celebrating is our freedom. We are celebrating our freedom this weekend because God has paid it over 2,020 years ago. On the cross of Calvary, he paid the price for you. He paid the price for me. He has paid it all. And I'm so happy today. I'm very excited because I am a free nation. Hallelujah. Coronavirus has no power over me. Because why? God has set me free. Hallelujah. Number two, just, just, I want you to follow that very well. You are purchased of a price. You have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. So as a result of that, you are no longer of yourself. You should you don't live to yourself. Every life you live, you should live to please God. 
you should live to satisfy him. You should live to glorify his name because you are not of yourself. You are God's property. He owns you. He who owns you owns everything you have. Everything you aspire to be. He owns it. Hallelujah. And number the second one, he said, do not be servant of men. What the Bible is saying there is that since God has set you free, you are no longer your own master. But the devil also has lost power over you. And now, if you go to a store to buy a television or to buy a particular thing, and when you get to that store, after purchasing it, and you get the receipt, it is signed, and then you get out, all over there, you have the purchase code, the contract, and everything. You get out, and the person who sells it to you, go there or come to your house to take what you have bought. What do you call such a person? What do you call such a person? A thief! A thief! Amen? And because the devil tries to hold on to you when God has paid the price for you, that is what makes the devil a thief. Now, you know the reason now why God called devil a thief? The reason why God called devil a thief is that God has paid the price. He has paid for you and paid for me. And as a result of that, devil has lost total control over our life, if you know it. Devil has lost total control over our life. And any forms of the, 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 the devil's entry and hold, when devil continues to hold on to your life, even though he has collected the price, the, 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 purchase, for the money for the purchase, he has collected the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed, and then he still holds on to you. That makes him a thief. And Jesus said the thief comes not but to kill in John 10, 10 to steal and to destroy. Devil is a thief because he is touching God's property. You are God's property. He has no authority over your life. He has no authority over your life. Devil is an intruder. Hallelujah. Devil has no power over you. But you need to, need to know this and to demonstrate it. If you don't know it, you will continue to be under the dominion of the devil. Until you know who, who you are and what you are in the Lord. The Bible says you are a choosing generation, but you need to, to know it. You are a royal prince, but you need to know it. You are a holy nation, but you need to know it. But, and, so, and God has set you free. The Bible says when God has set you free, why then must you be bound? God has paid the price for you on the cross of Calvary. I congratulate you. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are justified before God. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are justified before God. We are justified before God. Book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Hallelujah. Though you are a guilty, condemned sinner, just like I, myself, we are guilty, condemned sinner, but the blood says no, you are righteous. The blood says no, I've paid the price. We say, but he's guilty, but the blood says, I've, been, I've paid for that. I've paid for it. And you cannot hold him bound anymore because I, the, Lord, the Lord God says, no, 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 no. I have caused the blood of my son to, to be the blood of my son to be shed for him so that he might be set free. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all on the cross of Calvary. He paid it all. Even though we are guilty, condemned sinner, but the blood said no. He said, the blood said no. We are righteous. And that's why we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now being you, being justified freely, we shall be saved. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. By his blood. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 24 to 25. Romans chapter 3, verse 24 to 25. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We are justified freely. If it is not about your work of righteousness, yeah, we need to live a, a holy life. We need to live to please God. But one thing is, the devil still wants to continue to press you down and to destroy you. But you need to have faith in God and faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that is shed on the cross of Calvary for me and for, for you. Hallelujah. You cannot afford to be ignorant of your right in Christ Jesus. 
Hallelujah. He has paid it all. He has paid it all. On the cross of Calvary, he has paid it all. Hallelujah. When God has therefore set you free, why must you be bound? He has paid it all. The Bible says there's therefore now condemn no condemnation. Because when you look at it, God is the chief judge. Where is devil taking you? When he accuses you, God is the chief judge. Jesus Christ is our advocate. He's the lawyer. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit is the law enforcement agent. Now, you have everything on your side. So everything stands for you. And the, 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 the accuser is the devil. And the book of Roman, in the book of Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8, over there, and verse 1, the, the Bible says, There is therefore, by, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For there is therefore now no condemnation. And who says that? God, the judge. Who fight for you? Jesus Christ, the lawyer. And who's going to enforce it? The Holy Ghost. So you have all the Trinity on your side. Hallelujah. You see the power of the blood. You are justified before God. Hallelujah. We are what? Justified before God. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus, number seven, we are redeemed. We are redeemed. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, verse 7. Ephesians 1, hallelujah, verse 7. Through the blood of Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. Redemption means to buy back, to buy back and to do something for another thing. Hallelujah. I used to work in account department. And uh, my experience over there, I have very wide experience. And one of my experience over there when I used to work in account department is that we used to engage you know, we, we, with a lot of companies that work together with us and for us. And uh, whenever, in, a, in, in my place of work where I work, whenever we receive, we, 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 uh, whenever they render the service, we send check to them. And sometimes from the headquarters, the check might have not, our own check might have not cleared. So that means that we cannot have the money, enough money in the account to pay those checks that has been given to all our contractors. So what happened? Those checks, when they send it to the bank, the check will be sent back to us. That this check is not honored because that's not, you don't have enough money to pay this particular amount. So as a result of that, we write a receipt. And then we send money to them. We pay them cash. And then we're going to write a voucher that this is being cash paid to redeem the check made good. So that is being cash paid to redeem. So that is to say that with this cash, we are redeeming back the check that bounced, the check that has no value. Because the check has no value, but now we have paid for the check. Now, to redeem it, we have paid for it. So, as a result of that, uh, uh, when you are a Christian, when you are a sinner, you, are, you don't have any value. I don't have any value. What added value to me is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is what makes my life valuable. It is the blood of Jesus. And it is the blood of Jesus that makes your own life valuable. Devil respect no man, he respect nobody. But what, he, what the devil respect and what he fear is when he sees the blood. When he sees the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ has been something that the devil cannot go beyond. God told the children of Israel in the book of, uh, of Exodus chapter 12. God told them, he said, when it, uh, one of the plagues, the, one of the last plague, he said, all of you should put, mark the doorpost of your house with the blood. So that when the angel of death comes and when he sees the blood, he will pass you over. It will pass you over. By the blood of Jesus, every power of coronavirus is definitely going to pass you over. It's going to pass you over in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are redeemed. We are redeemed. Just like in the book of Leviticus, when the goat or ram is, you know, when a sinner sin, and then he puts his hand on, the, on, on, on that ram, he uses it to redeem his soul, to redeem his life. And so we are redeemed. The blood of Jesus Christ only enters once. It doesn't have to be shed every year. Only once. And for you and for me. And is forever active and forever able. 
Hallelujah. That is the confidence we have. That is the, and the power we have. The, there is great power in the blood of Jesus. Great power in the blood of Jesus. In the book of, uh, in, the, in, the, in the number eight, through the blood of Jesus, we overcome the devil. The Bible says in the book of Roman, uh, book of uh, uh, um, uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. The Bible says we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of our testimony, we overcome the devil. How do we overcome it? By the blood of the Lamb. What gives us the victory over the devil is the blood of the Lamb. It is the blood of, of the Lamb. That is what gives you the victory. That's what gives me the victory. It is the blood. So I congratulate you today. I thank God for your life. If you are a Christian, you have given your life to Christ, I congratulate you. I thank God for your life because through that blood, you are victorious. You are victorious. You can never win any battle without the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus Christ is the one. The Bible says we overcome him. We overcome the devil. We are no match to the devil by our own power or our own strength. What makes us important, what makes us strong, what makes us able, what gives us power is the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. And that's why I am not afraid. When it comes to coronavirus, I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. Do you people know that the vaccine, some they say, well, it might take two years, 18 months, 20 months for us to be able to get the vaccine for coronavirus. You don't need no, no vaccine. What you need is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is your vaccine. It's your, my vaccine. I don't need any other vaccine. When you have the blood of Christ in you, you have the victory over any virus, over coronavirus or whatever virus is called. The blood of Jesus Christ is able and up to date. It's definitely when the blood of Jesus Christ is upon your life. Power of the devil has no place. He has no, no effect. Hallelujah. You will not be affected. You will not be affected. When you have the blood, if you have the blood of Jesus, if you are under the blood of Jesus, you have victory. You have victory. We have victory in Jesus. We have victory in God. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, has set us free. The Bible says we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. You have victory over death. Through the blood of Jesus, you have victory over pain. Through the blood of Jesus, you have victory over sickness. Through the blood of Jesus, you have victory over depression. Through the blood of Jesus, you have victory over cancer. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have victory over marital problems. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have victory over fear. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have victory over every form of darkness, over power of witches and wizards. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have victory. We are victorious. We are victorious. Hallelujah. Glory be to God who has given us the victory. We are victorious. Hallelujah. 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 Finally and finally. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. You know, when you come to Jesus, that's no final. Because it's a continuous thing. It's a continuous thing. It's a continuous victory. It's a continuous, you know, continuous victory. You don't have to struggle anymore. What you just need to do is to trust. In his power, trust in his mind, cover yourself, be under the protection of the blood, and you definitely much more than conqueror. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of Hebrew. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the book of Hebrew, chapter 12. Hallelujah. Book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 22. Hallelujah. Hebrews, chapter 12. And verse 22. Hallelujah. From verse 22 to 24. Amen. The Bible said, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. And to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men, made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of the sprinkling, that speaketh better thing than the blood of Abel. The blood of the sprinkling, hallelujah, 
The blood of Jesus that speak better thing than the blood of Abel. Do you know that the blood speaks? Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ is speaking. He speaks better thing than the blood of Abel. Hallelujah. When you are condemned to die, the blood says, no, you shall live. Hallelujah. When you are condemned to poverty, the blood of Jesus Christ say no. That because of him, because of her, I choose to, to, to shed my blood because of her. So that I decide, I have decided to be able to live in poverty. So that through my, pov my poverty, you might be made rich. He became poor so that you might be rich through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you are healed. You have victory over sickness. Victory over sickness. Because the book of Isaiah chapter 53, from verse, from, uh, Isaiah chapter 53, from verse 3 to 6, I've said that to you, that he was beaten for your sins. Hallelujah. That by his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. The chastisement of our peace was upon Christ. By his stripes you have been healed. You are healed because of the stripe of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why the devil has no power over your life anymore. Because by his stripes you are healed. He, uh, you are healed. He has borne your griefs. He has carried your sorrow. The chastisement of he, of, of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Healed by the blood of Jesus. The blood say no. The blood say no. The blood say no. You are supposed to be sick, but this blood say by my stripes you are healed. You are supposed to be condemned. The, the, the blood says I paid the price. That there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You are supposed to die young. The blood says no. I have taken his place on the cross of Calvary. You are supposed to be under the dominion of the devil. The, the blood says, no, 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 I have set him free. And when God has set you free, well, well, how can you therefore be bound? The blood says no. The blood says no to your pain. He said no to your captivity. He has come to set you free from every bondage of sin and of the world and of the devil. He has come to set you free from poverty. Because he has become poor, so that because of his poverty you might be rich. He has carried the crown of thorn, so that you might be able to take the crown of glory. Jesus Christ has taken your place on the cross of Calvary. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have victory. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have power. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have, we, we, we have overcome the world. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Everything that the, the, the enemy want to do. The Bible says the blood of the sprinkling. Speak a better thing than the blood of Abel. The blood of Jesus Christ is speaking a better thing to your life right now. He says you will not be buried in under coronavirus. You will live to tell the story. You will not become history. In Uganda, the coronavirus time, you will live to tell the story. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ says to you, no evil will befall you. The blood of Jesus Christ says that from henceforth, let nobody trouble you because you bear your body the mark of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ is giving you life. It's giving you life because without the blood, you have no life in you. The blood of Jesus Christ is giving us hope. The blood of Jesus Christ is giving us open door. The blood of Jesus Christ is giving us victory. The blood of Jesus Christ is giving us power. And because he lives, we can live also. He said, because I live, we will live. Because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, lives, we shall live also. We are celebrating his resurrection today. We are celebrating the victory of Jesus Christ today. Because his victory has become our victory. His resurrection has become our resurrection. We have been moved from lockdown to breakthrough. Through the blood of Jesus, he has, we have been moved out of the lockdown. Whatsoever power that locks you down, whatsoever that power that locks you down, institutional lockdown, uh, circumstantial lockdown, health lockdown, material lockdown, psychological lockdown, I decree in the power in the name of Jesus that every lockdown, every power that locks you down begin to free you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you because you are faithful. We give you all the glory. I want you to just bow down your head wherever you are. And let me tell you something, please. If you have ever listened to this message, please make sure you share it. Begin to share it right now. Begin to share this message. 
begin to share this, share this message. There's a great blessing waiting for you. As you share this message, there are souls that need to hear this message. Somebody somewhere that need to hear this message. That they don't have the opportunity that you have right now. But they want to hear what you hear. Now I want you to share that message over the Facebooks. Share it all over. Let everybody receive great blessing that you are receiving right now. And as I'm speaking to you, I speak freedom over your life by the power in the blood of Jesus. I speak breakthrough over you right now. I speak open door over you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the power in the blood of Jesus, if you have ever been even diagnosed, if you are diagnosed as a positive uh, over this coronavirus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and I command, lose him right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that binds you, I command it to begin to lose you. In the mighty name of Jesus, be free from coronavirus. Be free from corona power. Be free from every pandemic. Be free from every evil power. Be free from every trouble. Be free from every sickness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we thank you because you are faithful. We give you all the glory, all the honor because this one also is passing and it shall go never to come back again. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all adoration. I pray, O oh Lord, for all our listeners, those who have been listening to me from every nooks and corners all over the world. Father, may your mighty power, O oh Lord, reach out to them. Lord, so many of them don't understand the power in the blood of Jesus. They don't even know. They have not experienced it before. Father, because of your grace and your power, Father, may they begin to experience it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. If there's anybody in our midst who has not given their life to Christ, Father, as they begin to open their heart right now to, help, to ask you to come into their life as their Lord and Savior, I pray, Father, Lord, let them be turned around. Let them begin to experience that same power in the blood of Jesus. I pray for everybody listening. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree freedom from coronavirus over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not party from it. You will not be victim of coronavirus. You will not fall casualty of coronavirus. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will live above it. You will live to tell the story. In the mighty name of Jesus, we co I cover you all with the blood of Jesus. Now you understand the meaning. I cover you all with the blood of Jesus. The Bible says this blood shall be a sign unto us. And when he sees the blood, he passes over. I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ covers you, protects you, be with you, strengthen you, empower you, justify you, give you the victory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We worship and we give you all the glory. Because we have answered our prayer. May your name forever be praised and glorified. May your death, O oh Lord, avail for us. May your death avail for us. May your blood avail for us. May your blood avail for us. May your blood avail for the whole world. May your blood avail for everybody who believes in your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor because we have answered our prayers. In Jesus' most precious name, our Lord and Savior, I have prayed. Amen. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he wash over your soul, your spirit and body and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Have a corona-free week in Jesus' name. Amen.